guys, Randy Pitlow here. And we're going to do Bonnie first as we're close here. So far, I'm really liking this game. Except for that one mission. Mr. Marston, I've been hearing I about your kill, plans. Like, Have you, Miss McFarland? Yes, from Lee Johnson to settle here and build a life for yourself. Sheep and ducks and stuff. I'm afraid those aren't my plans. See, I already have a life. Well, I had one, and I'm trying to reclaim it. Or maybe what you could say is that I had two, and I'm trying to end one of them so the other can survive. You do so love to talk in riddles, Mr. Marston. Do you do that? I wonder as a substitute for having anything interesting to say. Probably, Miss McFarland. Oh, call me Bonnie, you fool. Yeah, you fool. Call me Bonnie. Miss McFarland, I'm married. I have a son. I had a daughter, but she died. Years before that, I rode in the gang. We robbed banks, Dead trains, held people ransom. We killed people we didn't like. Bill Williamson was in that gang. Now, if I don't capture my former brother in arms, great harm will befall my family. Now, I don't suppose any of this is very interesting to you, but I hope it explains why I wasn't so eager to talk about it. No, I do understand. I had no idea. You poor man. Even in this new country, memories don't really fade. My father was an illiterate Scot born on the boat into New York. He never saw his homeland, but to hear him talk about it, you'd imagine he only ever ate haggis and wore a kilt. And he hated the English for what they had done to his great-grandparents that he'd never met. People don't. Do you know what I've noticed about the music? It's like so stereotypical, stereotypical, Midwestern times. That's what I. That's what I don't like. That's what I love about this game. Forget. Nothing gets forgiven. That's true, especially when it comes to money. And you know, even now, after all his labors, my father's debts are still terrible. I worry every day about us losing the ranch. It would kill him. My father died when I was eight years old. His eyes were, well, let's just say he was blinded in a bar fight south of Chicago. My mother died during childbirth. She was a prostitute and he was her, well, I, I don't know what he was. So I was sent off to an orphanage and ran away and fell in with a gang. My word. What a difficult life you've lived. Uh, the leader of the gang taught me how to read. Taught me how to see all that was good in the world. Dutch. He was a great man in a way. No, he's not. But you killed people. Sure. Uh, Dutch was not a great man in the end. Before it. And that's he the life I left. Or tried to live. In the end? I did. He let off or die. What? Leave? Uh, said too much, Bonnie. I'm an uneducated killer, sent here to do all I can do well. Kill a man in cold blood so that another man may do his part to cut crime in an area, and a rich man can be elected governor on the back of these promises. Civilization is a truly beautiful thing, Mr. <laughs> Marston. <laughs> Listen, can you help me? Well, I can try. What do you need, money? No, nothing so complicated. I need an extra hand to take out the herd to pasture. <laughs> sure. Point me in the right. The herd to pasture. So. Right. Are you ready to learn how to herd some cows? Oh my gosh. That's good. me all that back there. It must have been hard for you. I hope you understand now why I've been playing my cards somewhat close to my chest. I didn't know you had a wife and child. Then again, I don't think I ever asked. They're, they're lucky to have a man like you. I ain't so sure about that. 
But thank you. how you get into a row. Let's go. There you go. Thank you, Miss McFarland. I'll see you later. I have one at the ranch. Come on. All right, so we're at the marshal. Seven three one. What is it with these things? Hello. <laughs> it's a new line. Hello. Hello. Sounds fun. What's happening? I have no idea. Yeah, if it's important, they'll send someone down like they did with you. Suddenly, the world is full of days. Yeah. <laughs> I remember when we first got here. We used to consider people from Dade County to be exotic. Now guys can get here from the Midwest, and they can do it in six days. Things have changed. <laughs> They've gotten away from me. Hello? I don't understand it no more, boy. Honest goodness. I'm not sure I do. <laughs> Marshal! 
Marshal! Marshal! <coughs> Marshal! I've just been up in the canyon, spying like you said. I think I've seen me a couple of them rustlers. I think it was the Baller Twins and a couple of Mexicans. They up there right now? Well, it was a group of four men rounding up Mr. Gulch's livestock, and none of them looked like any of Gulch's hands, so... Yes, sir, right now? That sarcasm's most unbecoming, Eli. It's gonna hold you back in life, even worse than your lazy eye. All right, let's go. You ride with us again, Marson? Will you help me? I will try. And it'd be my pleasure. <laughs> Me, I'll help you. Me, John Gabbard, I don't work for the government, Marston. Help me out. I don't work for the government. Well, I got a telegram from the federal clouds in Blackwater that says otherwise. Are you Wait, some John, kind of government? vigilante? You don't look like no government, boy. I guess it's complicated. I came because it was made impossible for me not to. You sure are a tight-lipped son of a bitch, mister. I guess I am. I ain't gonna dig this hole no deeper. Ain't you all proud and superior? Don't forget you need us more than we need you. Bill Williamson folded you up like an empty person last time, if I remember correctly. Never down, Jonah. Listen to your boss, Jonah. There's a good boy. Otherwise, I'll put a hole in your hillbilly head and watch your tiny brain drain out. Mm. I'll be honest with you, Marston. I ain't for all this government interference. Believe me, Marshal, neither am I. I try to keep the federal boys happy. I mean, we need all the help we can get. But what does a flannel mouse city boy who's never forked a bale of hay in his life know about a state like New Austin? Yep, now I reckon. All this manifest destiny hogwash came in a wild land. Not far now. Eyes open, boys. gonna be outnumbered and those bastards ain't short on firepower neither let's see how many there are if we can take them alive good this is gonna be a Not fight sons of bitches. music to my ears marshal John has it. That was his before. Some pretty damn good shooting, John. Yep. Maybe you ain't the ten foot I thought you were. Coming from you. Thank you. 
a little something for my trouble. We're clear, boys. Let's get over this bridge. Right. Damn, those baller twins got themselves an army. Yeah, wrestling's a profitable business, and they ain't short on willing recruits these days. Why the man break his back working 12 hours a day for a rancher who can't afford to pay him? But the rancher can't pay him because those sons of bitches are robbing his cattle. Yep, it's one of them vicious circle things the marshal keeps jawing about. Come on, go! Let's our way It's just me and you, partner! Push forward! We gotta get to the marshal! Old goat. I saved your sorry hide more than once back there in Marston. I'll kill you twice, you son of a bitch. More Russian! Take him down! Just, you know, that was Stuck. Let's keep doing that.
happened to the marshal. He ain't no colt no more. Gather around and listen up. Let's get as close as we can before opening fire. Mm -hmm. I need to me. All right, stealthy as you can, boys. Let's get as close to those bastards as we can. Hey, this way!
quick. Let's get those hostages free. Where? Alright, so we're gonna get Bonnie. No. I'm gonna listen to the Elon on this. Real reason why Arthur Morgan is never mentioned in the first Red Dead Redemption game. Mr. Bach, we win. Marston, how are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Did you meet my father? John Marston, this is my father, Drew McFarlane. Pleasure to meet you, Mr. Marston. Please. So, my daughter informs me that you're here on some secret mission to remove some undesirables from the county. Something like that. I'm grateful for the hospitality, sir. Well, you know, we've lived here for 30 years now. Came here from the east. The land had never been settled. For 10 years, we fought the Indians. Tough men. And we had outlaws. And we had drought. And we had smallpox. Terrible winters. Cholera. A very more of my children than I raised. Sorry to hear that, sir. I've seen strong men wither and die under that unforgiving sun. That whole herd of cattle take sick and die. But I've never once doubted my life here. No, sir. When I hear about this so-called federal government sending out agents to covertly murder and control people, then I start to worry. I mean, yeah, all right, Williamson is a menace. And men like him are the plague. But isn't a government agent a worse menace? And all that symbolizes, I mean. You may be right, sir. Well, you're a brave man. You're always going to be welcome here. But you tell your friends out east that we don't want to live like that out here. It's sneaking around and spying secret missions. Preposterous. Trust me, sir. I agree with you. Good. Well, we won't insult you any further. Come on, Bonnie. We got things to do. Mr. Marston, do you want to join us? It's Daddy's favorite pastime. Apart from political discourse, that is. What is? Breaking in horses. Come on. I hear you're a pretty decent rider. For a city dweller. Let's see if we can put that new lasso of yours to good use. That ranch hand said there's a pack of wild horses nearby. Is I've been getting a ton of questions from you guys on my Facebook page asking me why is Arthur never mentioned in Red Dead Redemption? We find Arthur's grave in Red Dead Redemption. So a lot of people have been asking me to cover this. If you would like me to cover similar topics or other mysteries or secrets, Let's go. my Facebook page is in the description. Send me a message you on sure there. You sure have some interesting uh, theories on what the government's doing, like sir. It's super easy to communicate with you guys on there. I love getting to the background, share stories, and uh, some of you guys come up with the ideas that we, we get to do well, a video, so that's obviously really neat. But anyways, let's dive back into the main topic of this video and try to figure out why Arthur was never mentioned. And we only get to experience Red Dead Redemption. How are you going to break the wild horse? You can not right. play as any other character other than Jack in the epilogue. So I think the first thing we can start with is John Marston's personality. John Marston played his cards very close to the best. And uh, he was very shy about talking about his past through the entire game. I mean, even Come during on. the entire first act, he only ever talks about Bill Williamson, killed by Bonnie McFarland, or the Marshal. So it seems as if it's something he doesn't really love talking about. And he doesn't mention Javier at all until he realizes that Bill has run you off. You want to use that rope? And whenever he talks about Dutch, Hang on he always that him with a disgust because he doesn't there he is. Do it now, boy. his name. He only refers to him as, like, our leader or my mentor. Come on, and it's only until uh, later on when Dutch is a big part of the story. So those are just a couple examples right there of characters that were featured predominantly in Red Dead Redemption. So now that you know that, I think it would make sense why John wouldn't talk 
about Arthur, whether he was alive or dead, when he barely even talks about the members of the gang that he's chasing down. Now again, getting back to the thing I mentioned at the beginning of this video, obviously, Arthur was written but also John had no reason to talk about him. Horses been spotted somewhere outside of Armadillo. Let's go, Mr. Marston. We yeah. can really do with those horses. Go. <laughs> so it all starts with a good one. No for the wicked. It all Let's starts with a good one. Let's see if we can get back down the other herd of horses. John Marston is the luckiest man alive. You never did tell me why you were never married. Besides from the snobbery, that is. Oh, 
Olha o chinelo. Olha o chinelo. Thanks for your help today, Mr. Marston. We got some fine horses. You know, why don't you keep that stallion as your own, as a thank you from all of us? Thank you, ma'am. Mm.
Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. You need help? Mister, you alive? Fuck, fuck. God damn it. Good heavens. Excuse me? I said, no, I'm not okay. Do I look like I'm okay? You look pretty good for a corpse. <laughs> Praise <Yeah. be. laughs> Move up, mister. Time to get you to a doctor or an undertaker. Whichever you need once we get to town. Thank <laughs> Peter, open up the pearly gates. I'm coming home. <laughs> Come on, mister. Come on. No! Hurry, sir. I'm bleeding like a badly butchered hog. You'll be fine. Just focus. You better take the reins. I don't think I'm strong enough. I'm finished. Done for. Just sit up straight, will you? Shut up, while you're at it. The closest doctor is in Armadillo. What is your name, friend? John Marshall. Oh, good God! Out of the frying pan into the fire. Excuse me. How many outlaws can a man encounter in one day? You must have me mistaken with somebody else, friend. The Pollard Twin Walton's gang. I know who you are. Word sure travels fast around here. My God! They come back to finish oh, me crap. off. I'm so quick, Mr. Diggins. How convinced this is possible? Oh, there's 
I'm going, I'm going, going. I'll kill him faster. Oh, I'm sorry.
Let's go. We're here. Stay with me. Oh, where the devil are we? Armadillo. We made it safe. You'll be happy to know. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You're a gentleman and a, a true man of honor. Coming from you, I doubt that means much, but <laughs> I appreciate the civility. I owe you, sir. And I always pay my debts. Uh, Jesus! But if I die, I'm sorry for it. If not, I'll be your man for... for... Let's get you fixed up first. Then we'll decide what you're my man. Marshall. you're here you want to make yourself useful not particularly listen son i know you got a mission but right now i need another gun why what's happening we've had this problem for months with this group of bandits who are getting drunk and murdering settlers last night they went to a big place up near ridgewood they burnt the place down killed the men burning most of them alive and raped the women women folk then got their throats slit one of them survived and walked in here this morning anyway we got a posse gathering up near Ridgewood. Will you ride with us? All right. Thank you, John Marston. It's gonna be a bloody job. Huh. Mm. I don't think I know any other kind, sir. <laughs> Let's go! Let's hit the breeze, boys. Marston, I hear you caught up with Mr. West Dickens. I did. For a man who claims to have found a remedy to all ailments, he was in pretty bad shape. His tonic is helping a great many people. It's a medical breakthrough from the East. The result of years of research. If only it could cure him of his diarrhea of the mouth. I wouldn't be so dismissive of science if I was you. I'm just changing fast. He's no more a scientist than I am a priest. But people can spend their hard-earned money however they please. He's certainly a character, that wet Dickens. A more flannel mouth bunko artist I've never met. Look at them vultures circling up ahead. Might just be a dead critter. Marston, take a look. Eli, you too. Ain't no survivors here, Marshal. Man, this don't look too good. Somebody was so busy killing people, they went and dropped their gun. Take that gun. Take it. Did we get it? Yes. Let's go! I think we did. Here. Door's locked, Marshall. 
Marshal! Back door's locked! I'm sorry, lawman, but look out. There's a lock on this one! Nobody's in the shed! Holy sweet mother of mercy. Please, oh. please don't shoot me. Some bandits came by and took us hostage. They're holed up in the farmhouse. Some of my family is being kept hostage inside. <laughs> Aye, aye, Captain. We're gonna have ourselves some fun. You're gonna be alright. Yeah, Head for the shed in the back as soon as it looks clear. This has gone far enough. Get into that house. How does that mean you do that?
bastard. It's mighty generous of you, mister. Are you kidding me? Chasing him down like wild dogs. I thought you were supposed to protect us, Marshal. You folk eat men. You ain't nothing. You just some men on the government payroll taking money that the rest of us have to pay for with our lives. Yeah. What is wrong with this country? Not up, men. The man that kills the boss of that bunch gets fifty dollars. It ain't about the money, Marshal. These are people's lives, people's homes. <laughs> Come on, they're gonna get away! Hurry, boys, let's get out! Let's go! Do you think they might be headed for Fort Mercer, Marshal? What? Williamson's men? Maybe. All this sure looks like their handiwork. Make sense! Come on, Marshal! This might be our chance! What's your faith with Williamson anyway, Marston? Let's just say he's the currency in a complicated transaction. What the hell you talking about? Some people I have the displeasure of knowing want him dead. Yep. Why does that involve you? We used to run in a gang together. It was once like family. If this is how you treat your family, I'd hate to see what you do to your enemies. <laughs> that was a lifetime ago. And bear it in mind. He's left me for dead the last two times I've seen him. I'm about figuring we've moved past the family part. Eyes up! You see that? You just walk away now, John. I didn't kill you before, but I sure as shit will now! Get yourself down here, Bill. You know you ain't man enough to stop me. <laughs> you know I don't want to kill you, but I will. You always did have a high opinion of yourself, John. <laughs> Dutch always said you were an arrogant son of a bitch. I guess he was about right. Get him, boys! Everybody, take cover! In that shed! Yeah. 
No fire being shit up Bill. Thanks for your help, John. Norman here is going to help us get to Bill. Ain't you, Norman? Yep. Thank you, Mr. Dick. Mighty kind. Fuck you! Hog time. Oh, you. Let's get him to jail. <laughs> 